welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Atelophobia, we have updated the Demir Wurza Legacy deck I played on the channel for them a month ago into Azorius. The Demir deck that I played, it had some cool stuff going on, but it was trying to go off with Time Sieve in a way that was not particularly conducive to winning matches of Magic. And what we found in that video was assembling Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek won games a lot more than any of the other stuff we were goofing around with did. The combo here, Thopter Foundry, pay one, sacrifice a non-token artifact, make a 1-1 one, one blue flying Thopter, and gain one life. Sword of the Meek is an artifact that whenever a 1-1 one, one comes into play, you can return it from your graveyard to play equipped to that creature. Basically, you can pay X on any turn where you have both of these permanents to gain X life and make X Thopters. If you have Urza, Lord High Artificer, each of those Thopters and the Sword of the Meek tap for blue, so you now also have infinite mana and can tap, can cast your deck. That's a powerful interaction. After goofing around with a bunch of packages that didn't all point in the same line in the Demir version, we focused on Azorius because Sword to Plowshares, Prismatic Ending are powerful effects in the format. Thopter Foundry is a blue and a hybrid black white so you can be Azorius, Demir, or Esper and play these cards and we decided to go with Esper this time give us a little more game on the fair axis and we're just focused directly on Thopter Sword two copies of Transmute Artifact a card that did not appear in the previous build we were playing War of Invention for reasons unknown instead of this anchor analog that is legal in this format Transmute can turn basically any artifact in the deck into Thopter Foundry or Sword of the Meek for either zero or a very small investment of additional mana. Emery is at the core of a soft eight cast kind of thing. We're actually six cast, not eight, but we're not trying to bury the opponent in cards. We're trying to get enough cards that we can assemble Thopter Sword with Force of Will back up. Urza Saga hanging out at the bottom, as it does in all of these artifact-type strategies. Backed up by Force of Will, Force of Negations in the sideboard. A bunch of artifacts that we can tutor for in various ways to affect the difficult matchups. And with that, we got ourselves a deck here. This is Azorius, Thopter Sword, Urza Combo. Let's do it. If you've ever wondered why you're paying so much for wireless service instead of dual lands, let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who I'm partnering with for today's video. You may recognize Mint Mobile from their ads with Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner of the company, but let me tell you about their service. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low by selling directly online. They don't have stores or salespeople. I use it for my streaming and mobile gaming with no noticeable change in quality. Click the link in the video description or scan the QR code for the best value in wireless. Right now, until July 14th, you can use my link to get any Mint Mobile wireless service for $15 a month, including their unlimited plan at a 50% discount. Switching to Mint is easy. Their digital eSIM cards allow you to sign up and activate online. It takes about 15 minutes and you don't have to leave your house. Stop spending magic money on wireless. Check out my link or QR code to switch to Mint Mobile today. I'm on the draw for round one. My hand can accelerate Nerza Saga. I'm usually in to keep hands like this in the blind. What I mean by accelerate Urza Saga is play Saga on turn one and actually get the full run of constructs out of it, which you have to cheat on mana to do that because normally that's a three mana play. And on turn two, you don't have access to that. But Ancient Tomb does it. Mox Opal, Urza's Bobble almost do it. Another artifact, an artifact land off the top, does it that way instead. This hand also has options on a turn two Urza. Pretty cool. See what my opponent is up to, and then I can decide how I want to fight it. Forest, Birchler Rangers. Okay, so our elves on a Moldify. This Thought Monitor actually kind of pulls me in a 
direction of maybe turn two Urza is what I want. Yeah, I think that Urza's saga is a little slow here at what I need to be doing. Just gotta hope this Molda 5 doesn't turn to me. My opponent said they like the YouTube videos. Everyone say hi to Tracone. Hi, Tracone. Tracone, who is about to destroy me. And this has to be a natural order line, because at this point, Clumps of Nature is off the table. That's an another Urza. Not really what I needed here. But I will play this Urza. And I have two mana available with one, two, three, four artifacts. Thought Monitor costs three right now. Can't quite get over that hump. I think bobbling them, I'm probably going to look at a natural order here. Yep, natural order confirmed. I have to bobble them though because I'm in the market for a force of will. Ugh, that plow is so close to being a card I care about. But they would have to tap their whole squad to cast natural order, which is not exactly good. Like if they get a Crater Hope Behemoth, they attack me for, what, seven, eight? They attack me for eight and pass the turn. That's not even good. That fetch land to get a Dryad Arbor doesn't change that. Oh, right. They can Birch Lure it, and then they have two attackers. That's pretty good. Yeah, the land draw was solid here. This is still not lethal. This is just 12. And my opponent's hellbent. I have Swords to Plowshares. I could just go to six, or I could double block Heritage Druid, and then plow hoof. That's really interesting. They can't kill a Construct and Urza. They do have to pick. And I have another Urza. Okay, I am going to double block Heritage Druid. My goal here is to just remove material from the board. Because I can play Saga, plow hoof, and then we're at a high life total on a stable board against a help an opponent. All of those are words I like to say together. Oh, there's the force at will. A wise guy. Luckily we didn't need it, but here's Saga. Just gonna plow the hoof now. I don't want them to get any value off of a cradle or any such thing. Can I cast this thought monitor right now? One, two, three, four. I can. That's exciting. I'll do that. Neato. I probably should have attacked. Done that pre-combat and attacked. I just missed four damage. Let's hope that doesn't end up being the difference. Yeah, by blocking the Heritage Druid last turn, I get more taps out of Ancient Tomb over the course of this game, which could be an important resource. There's a Saga ticks up. And now, I'm almost certainly shoving an Urza into play. Question is, do I want to play Ottawara or do I want to keep them in my hand to interact with them? And do I care about interacting with them? I have Force Blue card back up. Blue, blue. One, two. All right, I'll leave Ottawara in my hand for now. And if I play Mox Opal, I can keep Ottawara and keep my life total high. Yeah, I'm going to play the other Opal. And then I can attack with these creatures. I'm going to make another construct before blocks just to push extra damage here. Got my artifacts for blue. Make a bonus construct. This puts one extra damage on the board. Now they have to beat an Ottawara and a Force of Will and 10 points worth of blocking with their two cards in their hand. That doesn't do it. Okay, cool. Their Malta 5 was a big help there. I mean, they executed exactly what they wanted to do, which is just like 1, 2, 3 natural order. But because they couldn't dump out two extra creatures, the natural order was ignorable. Things that I could do in this matchup. I don't need Soul Guide Lantern, so there's one free thing to cut. I did waffle on playing Disenchant in the sideboard at all compared to more Prismatic Endings, where Prismatic Ending I would absolutely be bringing in here, but Disenchant I'm not bringing in here. That came from a Telephobia, and... It does kill Null Rod without needing two colors. It can fight over an Omniscience, or it kills Urza Saga in Saga Mirrors. Just a really clean tool for that sort of job, but it doesn't do anything quite as clever as Prismatic Ending does. Luckily, I have these two candidates that are definitely coming in. And maybe I shave one Opal. My opponent's going to have Collector Oof. 
somewhere in their deck. Okay, this makes sense. Let's do it. We are both kind of fast combo decks with respectable fair plans. My deck has Force of Will in it, and now Other Sworn Canonist. Their deck has Collector Oof and lots of ways to find it. Oh, this is... This is suspicious. What's my blue count? Blue source count. We gotta take inventory here. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. And Opal doesn't count here. So I have three looks at ten cards because I get a draw step, a bobble, and then another draw step. Slightly worse than one in five cards in my deck is a blue source right now, and I get three looks at it. I don't like those odds. The Force of Will is the only reason I was even thinking about it. Okay. Uh, this one is good with any artifact. Still has the Force of Will. Plows a big upside. I think I'm more willing to take a risk on this because Emery can get things going with any zero drop artifact or any land. And I'll send Thought Monitor to the bottom. That one's the farthest away from being helpful right now. Elvish Mystic resolves. Come on, White Source. Ancient Tomb. Okay, that does get the party going at least. Seed of the Synod could get chewed up by any kind of hate card, whether it's Zenith for Oof or just like Reclamation Sage. I still think it's the right one to lead on, though. Okay. Pass. The Seed of the Synod gives me more live outs to get this Emery into play in a way that I'm excited about. Two Nettle Sentinels. Okay, this is a lot of this. Okay, no second land drop, though. And Mox Opal. That is a good one to put into play. It makes Emery cheaper. I can do this for one. Play Ancient Tomb. I milled Staff of the Storyteller, which is a card that I cannot play off of Emery right now. They drew a land. Cracking the Fetch. They didn't play a land drop last turn, so the three cards in their hand are all spells right now. Dryad Arbor in this spot's really interesting. These Nettle Sentinels had free attacks. They would have just untapped. And they're still going to attack. But second meaning that Elvish Visionary is probably better. Because you've already made your land drop through. You're not like drawing into Cradle and trying to win right now. Okay, some artifact to turn on Opal or a White Source are what I want here. Oh no. Uh, Yeah, we did not get there on any of the speculative things I was hoping for. Can't get a third thing in. Can't play the cards that I do have. Yeah, I might just die here from missing on that. I guess my hope here is now that they overcommit to an unprotected natural order, and I just force it, and then go to my turn and draw the white source. Then we're cooking. There is a cradle. If I have to force something here, which is likely... I have to decide whether I think Thopter Foundry or Urza is a better plan to win this game with. Zenith or three. I don't know what costs three specifically. That could just be a trick of like, aha, you thought it was a three drop, but here's Collector Roof. Or they could actually have something like Leobold in their deck. I don't know. Or Reclamation Sage is live. Wrist. Whatever it is, not interested. I'm interested in drawing a source of mana that gets this Urza into play. Because any untapped mana source gets Urza into play, and then I can use the Construct and the Opal to cast Canonist. They're down to one card in hand. We're about to see what it is. It's a Viz. So they still have one card in hand. But it's not one they've been sculpting and sandbagging around this whole game, which is what I was worried about. All right, another Nettle Sentinel. They are now Hellbent, way ahead on board, but getting this Urza down would help stabilize. Ugh! Okay. I've seen enough. That one artifact short of turning on Opal stabilizes this game. If any of those lands was a white source, the game stabilized. Just a little awkward there. Is Damping Sphere something I want for this matchup? It shuts off Cradle and makes it really hard to storm out. If I bring those in, what am I cutting? Staff of the Storyteller is actually really slow for this matchup and hard to cast. I think I'd rather have Damping Sphere. I'm going to make that change. On the play with... Uh, this hand's weird, but it works. If I go 
Sword of the Meek on turn one, Sword of the Meek on turn two, Mox Opal Thought Cast. That is a plan. And I will move forward with that plan. Opponent mold to six. And I think I want Mox Opal in play. Elves frequently has Thoughtseize. And like we saw last game, my mana is extremely important. Zenith for one, okay. Or Zenith for zero, spending one mana on it. You know what I mean. Come on, banger. Thopter Foundry. Or are they thinking about Force of Vigor right now? That would be annoying. Oh, Damping Sphere. Interesting. How do I sequence this turn now? The Thought Cast currently costs three, and Mox Opal's not on. If I play Damping Sphere, that would make Thought Cast cost six, but reduced by three. If I play Sword of the Meek first, and then Damping Sphere, Thought Cast would cost seven, reduced by four, so I can't Thought Cast that turn if I do that. I think I want the Damping Sphere. That seems pretty effective right now. And I'm just going to use Ancient Tomb to cast Thought Cast here. Oh, I did my math wrong. I can't do that. Oh, because Damping Sphere turns off Ancient Tomb. Ugh, that's what I didn't count. Whoops. Nice deck building, idiot. That was directed at me, not a Telephobia. <laughs> okay, yeah, I counted most of the things. If I just float to before I play the Sphere, this line works. That's awkward. I hope this ends up hurting them more than it hurts me. That's all I can hope for right now. Reclamation Sage is a card in your deck. Please kill Damping Sphere. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yikes. All right. Yeah, that's awkward. At least it was a Lightning Rod for the removal. Swords to Plowshares. Sort of the Meek get in. Thought Cast. I can Thought Cast with one floating right now. Thought Cast pretty good. There's Thopter Foundry. If I can be alive for another turn, we're in good shape. I'm going to plow the Dryad Arbor because that represents actual resources and not just a 2 1. And hopefully we can be stable and tearing it up this turn. As long as my opponent doesn't do anything too crazy, I can even answer Collector Roof. Yeah, if I just floated my 2 off Ancient Tomb before playing the Damping Sphere last turn, then I would have thought casted and had this plow and Thopter Foundry already. And we would have been foundrying this turn. Slightly inopportune. But if this works, we're in there. Even have two swords, so I'm not at risk of getting surgical extraction. Burian Ranger. Okay. This cradle. Disappointing. Cards real good. Uh, looks like they have the Zenith. Shit. Yeah, one of the most important skills in prison decks is sequencing. Oh, you either don't have an oof or think you're winning without it. Okay. I mean, that's possible. If they just slam hoof next turn, I could be in trouble. I'd love to draw a white source. Force of will. Ugh. Okay, so basically I can play Thopter Foundry and try to pile on Thopters right now. That's what I'm going to do. Sitting back on this Force of Will or Swords to Plowshares seems loosey-goosey. Sacrifice this sword. And sacrifice the other sword. This gives me two... Two threes. Okay. I have ten life, two blockers. I can have two more blockers. Don't think I have Greater Hope Behemoth Beat here. Because they have Cradle, they can dump out as hard as they want. Glimpse. Uh oh. That's scary. Yeah, that miss sequence with the damping sphere is probably gonna cost me the game. Just instead of clenching my cheeks against their current hand, I am uh I could have been so much further ahead than this. I'm gonna respond to this because it's probably getting collector roof. Or at least it could get collector roof. This is life total neutral, as I lose two and then I gain two. I'm at 10, and now I have four blockers totaling eight toughness. And now this Zenith's going to happen. Honestly, if they Zenith for Oof here, I'm pretty stoked about it, because that means I'm not getting hoofed. But it'd be really weird to get Oof here after playing Glimpse of Nature, unless the Glimpse was bait, and they don't actually have more stuff. Okay, the Zenith for two was bait, and they Zenith for one and got 
Heritage Druid instead. I don't mind that. That is a mana they won't have this turn. Okay. Backup Cradle. Might not matter. Or we're just hoofing from hand. Zenith for 7. Uh, that's not enough to hoof. They could get Archon of Valor's Reach, which I can answer with Swords to Plowshares. Unless they play, like, Bane of Progress or something extremely weird. Oh, wow. What's going on over there? They're just making guesses. Zenith for 7 to get Elvish Visionary. And then what seems like a shame concede. Uh, I'm not gonna be a jerk about it, but it does seem like they either just switched their list or just switched onto elves or weren't quite sure what their zeniths needed to be doing there. Yeah, I'm not going to rub that in, but I thought we were in trouble, and probably if that second zenith gets Wirewood Symbiote, and then you bounce Elvish Visionary, untap something else, you get two draws off the Visionary, and then you're reset with Heritage Druid, that's probably what I would have done there. Anyway, we got away with that one. On to the next round. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. I am on the play in round number two. I have a turn two Emery. Razor Tide Bridge not being Seat of the Synod. It's really tough balancing a two color artifact deck with ETB tapped lands versus the lands you actually want to play. But Ancient Den doesn't turn one Emery here either. So I'm just going to take what I can get. Play the land that is immune to Wasteland and take my turn two Emery. Verdant Catacombs, or an Underground Sea. Max Dorshan recently did kind of well with a bug scam list that I played against on the channel earlier this week, but it is a very cool deck that I can see why people would be drawn to it. Not that I know that that's what this is. This could be any Black Storm deck. But Verdant Catacombs into Underground Sea is curious. Does Ancient Tomb change any of my math? If I play Tundra and Mox Opal, I can play Emery for one, but I don't get to do anything else. If I go Ancient Tomb, Staff of the Storyteller... Okay, yeah, this does actually change my math. Ancient Tomb, Staff of the Storyteller is two artifacts. Mox Opal's three, and then those three can cast Emery, and I still have Force Backup. That's a good turn. Charge the Staff, Mox Opal... And they're like, oh, they can draw a card. You wish. I was just drawing a card. How about I draw four cards instead? Forever. Or zero, because I've milled zero artifacts again. Okay. Off we go. That was a pretty sweet turn, too. This is one of those moments where it's like, oh, yeah, all those cards are legal and legacy, I suppose. <laughs> you don't often see them all together, but Staff of the Storyteller alongside Emery. It is an artifact. Witherbloom Command... Killing my staff and regrowing one of their lands. Okay, I now have something for Emery to cast. Oh, JK. Do I think Force of Willing this is worth it? They milled over a reanimate, basically confirming they are the scam deck. Yeah, I think this is worth doing. This is worth so many cards if Emery stays in play. If I can staff and start drawing cards. Days. BTFO'd. Okay. Now I'm in trouble. Went from feeling good to feeling bad pretty quick on that one. Just draw Urza and slam it. Oh, easy game. Another one. Sword of the Meek is now in the graveyard. Which, for the record, if I cast my Staff of the Storyteller, Sword of the Meek will appear attached to the spirit. And I'm now unscammable because I'm hellbent. I don't care if they greet me. There's a fetch, then a brainstorm. So they are digging for an answer to Emery right now. That's what makes sense here. I did mill over an Urza. If they reanimate my Urza, that's a pretty serious value engine in play. They appear to be just passing the turn, though. 
I'm going to play Urza Saga. That is a source of colorless mana that doesn't hurt me. I like that that exists. And Emery, target Staff of the Storyteller. And I'll cast this card and see if they want to fight over it on the stack. Yeah, I would too. Force of Will, pitching Daze. It feels bad to lose two cards over zero cards, but also it would feel worse to have Staff of the Storyteller in play. And that's a huge red flag that they don't have an answer to Emery because they would never make that play in their life if they could do anything else. And they're working through a Brainstorm lock here. Brainstorm does see two new cards. Let's just hope they're bad. How about that? Let me keep putting this card on the stack until you're dead. And now they have to think about Urza Saga as well. Though I think this is a Wasteland deck. Reanimate my Urza. Yep, that's something we talked about being possible. Does cost you four life for some mana, basically. And a one four. You have the wasteland. I have the Thopter Foundry. My goodness. There is a sword in my graveyard, and I can sack Mox Opal to start the party. I still think that for the storyteller is better. And I can have both. Like I don't even need to choose. I'm gonna tap Ancient Tomb to cast this thing. Because that leaves up more colored sources for the Thopter Foundry. Charge my staff, get Sword of the Meek up here, and then Blue White Thopter Foundry. Hello. With my floating mana, sack the sword. Now we're cooking. Charging the staff. Oh, I could get used to this. Okay. And I get one flying through. They're at six. They are an Uro deck. I would be kind of impressed and surprised if they can stabilize against what I'm doing. They have one extra mana here in the form of this construct. They can't start flipping for Urza yet. I have seen Pernicious Deed in builds of this deck. That would be pretty insane here. It looks like that's not what they have. Uro gains some life, sure. It's in a wasteland. Picking up Tundra. I don't know that I agree with that. Ancient Tomb makes more creatures. Seat of the Synod. Emery can cast Bobble. Bobble. And I'll just attack with my flying creatures. Pretty sick that Baleful Strix is an artifact for mana over there. That seems unfair. And do I even bother drawing for staff? I think I do. I have Soul Guide Lantern in my deck. It's not a Soul Guide Lantern. Then. Bobble you, see what you're cooking with, snuff out. Okay. It's a card that exists, but I think it's past the point where that's helpful, and they can't alt cast it anymore because they're at four. Play Uro here, but that doesn't beat me. Uro's on the stack. I'm going to make some copies in response. I don't expect them to really have any main deck graveyard hate that would be relevant here but still just doing the things I'm going to do before they draw extra cards makes sense to me. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty stressed out by this Staff of the Storyteller having this many story counters on it and knowing that I'll never use them all. I mean, like, I'm going to win the game, that's why I'm not using them all, but it's still, like, uh, lost value. And they scooped it up. Thopter Foundry, baby. And this is the Bug Scam deck. Other Sworn Canonist is pretty good against scamming. They are a graveyard deck. Lion Sash is a card that interacts with their graveyard as well. That's six cards. Where am I going to put them? You do sacrifice the artifact as on resolution with Transmute Artifact. It's not an additional cost. I like that. I do like shaving opals against decks that you need every card to functional against. Do I need two Sword of the Meek in this deck? I'm worried about that. I mean, that makes my transmutes better, so I probably do like it. Staff is actually great here. Of course, it will is an interesting one because it is a two for one, but they do do things that might be powerful enough for me to care about that. Is this a reality chip matchup? That's card advantage they would struggle to beat if I can get it on anything, which is a 5-mana investment. I think I like it more than Force of Will. Yeah, I'm just going to go down and dirty here. No counter spells play to the board. This is a turn 2 Urza if I don't get scammed. Tropical Island, Brainstorm. 
field turn one brainstorm so they either have grief but not a black card or black card but not grief or they have grief and they're trying to find a black card they care less about a okay, grief pitching grief probably going to take my urza here which is a distressing thing for them to be able to reanimate this early in the game i'm going to play out the saga get that happening bobble opal and i'm going to bobble in their upkeep I want to see the card, but I don't want them to be able to take the card I draw. Misty Rainforest on top. But they knew that already from Brainstorm. Black Source. Sylvan Library. That's a good one. Bobble finds Emery. And I found another Emery. It is more important that I get Saga happening than anything else right now. Uh, yeah, I can't main phase the... Activation and turn on Opal, because that's still only two artifacts. All right. Off we go. Like I said, I have seen lists with Pernicious Deed in them, which does obliterate Urza Saga. Completely unceremoniously and violently. They kept one card. Brainstorm. Okay, that turns off the possibility of Pernicious Deed this turn. Wasteland's a bummer, but I do get a Construct. Going after Ancient Tomb is aggro. I respect it. So I float colorless here. Tutor Soul Guide Lantern, probably. Snuffing my construct token, sure. Yeah, these are some aggressive lines that I respect. Soul Guide Lantern. I'm actually gonna exile my own Urza with the ETB trigger. So they can't reanimate that. Because I can control their graveyard after this. Maybe that didn't make any sense because now Emery is worse. I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Anyway, here's Razor Tide Bridge and Emery. That's what I'm saying. All right, milled over and Urza anyway. Too clever for my own bridges. Not take any extra cards there. Like Engineer, okay. This on Thopter is pretty strong. Yep. That works. Emery, pick up. Mishra's Bobble, play this Bobble, play this Bobble, play this Saga, get that party started again, and I'll Bobble you now. Further Bloom Command, pretty solid. I can buy back the Wasteland, but not really, because I have Soul Guide Lantern. But they get a fresh mill on resolution, so they'd have to mill another Wasteland. Oh, they went down to two, interesting. Getting after it here. Touching down to one. Ponder. Chose to shuffle. Wow. They went to one life to shuffle their library. Third Bloom Command. Target player mills three and destroy target permanent. Well, I was going to do this in response anyway. Sell each opponent's graveyard. That gets rid of the existing wasteland. They get to mill three and they whiffed. Pernicious D2 forces in the bin. Cool. That was a complete blank. And I am going to bobble them again. Reanimate is there. That card is not castable at one life. Surgical extraction. Cool. Lots of goods here. Emery. I think I'd rather have bobble than slow guide. Bobble. And I get thought monitor into play right now. And still activate Urza Saga. Seed of the Synod makes the same two mana that Ancient Tomb does. Except it doesn't hurt me. Monitor currently costs three. If I go one, two, make a construct, it would cost two, and then I'd only have one. So no, I can't do this yet. Or I could play monitor, but I don't get a construct at the other side. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set a stop in their draw step, because surgical extracting pernicious deed seems prudent here. I'm going to let them resolve their Sylvan library. And then I'm going to get perfect information. But they're going to concede first. Cool. All right. Ground through that one. There was a play pattern here that was reminiscent of Kark Clan Ironworks versus Grixis Death Shadow when that was a thing in Modern. Where the Shadow deck relied a lot on Discard to keep control of things, but the KCI deck could dump out a bunch of its resources in like Bobbles and Opals and Spheres and Stars and whatever and just get functionally Hellbent by turn two. But then also just draw three or four cards at will at any point or play out of the graveyard or have other sources of advantage that didn't involve keeping a stocked hand. And that's kind of what happened here. 
We remain undefeated. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play for round three, I will not be keeping this one lander. I will be keeping this turn one Emery. And now I have the choice of keeping Urza and hoping I can turn to it, or keeping Staff of the Storyteller and having a more reasonable mid-range plan. I think I'm going to bottom Urza and just play it safe. If that makes me a coward, then count it. I'm a coward. Opal, Bobble, Emery. We're in there. There's a sort of the meek in my graveyard, but nothing I really want to cast. I'm going to bobble them on their turn. The end step is the correct place to bobble with Urza's bobble. The upkeep's usually right with the other one. Or I'm losing Mish or I'm losing Emery and might just need this bobble anyway. Is that true? I don't think that's even true. I don't need Opal to be on. Oh, if Opal's on, I can draw a card immediately with staff. Never mind. I do want the bobble to stay in play. I am out muscling days thanks to the ancient tomb. Ah, uh, the force of will. What a blowout. Force pitching chart, of course. Yeah, this staff of the storyteller would have come with a 2-3 flyer immediately. Yeah, I would have countered that too, opponent. I'm going to bobble them in their end step. Now it's time to find something to do with my mana. E-Storm. And they did not wasteland me. I like that. They do have ponder. And they did not shuffle their library. I'm going to bobble you now. And see a daze. Good to know. Good deck. Give me some action. That does not quite qualify as action, because I can't cast it. It is a nutty banger, though, if we get there. And I am going to Mishra's Bobble them now. Oh, shit, Murktide. Well, if I can get the Thought Profoundry into play, that doesn't matter. Another Opal doesn't help me here. Oh my god, we're so close to just stability and winning the game. Come on, untapped. Blue source off the top. Emery, not a blue source. Blue card. I have to take my medicine here and invest in Emery. I can take a hit for seven. Not a huge deal. Opter Foundry just hit the graveyard. I hope they sink a bunch of resources into killing Emery. Okay, there's a resource into killing Emery. Okay, deck, for real, for real. I need you now to deliver the source of mana. Ah, we're going to die with the card in our hand. Uh, I guess technically, nope, there's not even a reasonable out here. I could thought cast and go to five. And then I'm just wide open to days. Thought cast would have to hit like. Doesn't even there's not even a thing it could hit. Yeah. I am dead barely and I'm mad about it. Yeah, you'll notice this mana base has two of the Razor Tide dual land, even though Seed of the Synod and Ancient Tomb are air quotes better, or Tundra. We did identify that the colorless mana requirements, or the colorless mana in this deck, have friction with the colored mana requirements. Like, it wasn't unknown to us when we worked on the deck. It's just a bummer that it's come to fruition so quickly multiple times. Okay, Force of Will. It might need Force of Will to fight over meltdowns. Lion Sash is solid, and I think Needle on Wasteland is not bad. Reality Chip is a 0-4. Soul Guide Lantern's fine. Been tripping over my Mox Opals. I can shave one of those. Got Lion Sash in, and maybe I just don't bring in Needle. Needle is a cheap artifact that turns on Opal. It's also another thing that gets swept up in a Meltdown. 
Okay. I'm just going to bring in Lion Sash for an opal and call that a day. Yeah, we were so close there. Uh, this hand has a turn two Emery that gets dazed, dead to Wasteland on the spot. Mulligan. Oh no, come on, not like this. Not against Delver. Okay, I'll keep this one. Put Prismatic Ending and Urza on the bottom. Yeah, I'm just going to sink into Urza's Saga here and hope that it wins the game on its own. Falling Tarn. Delver of Secrets. It's a good one. I am going to Ancient Tomb and try to get this Saga doing stuff. I now have White to deal with the Delver. That's good. Delver immediately flipped, revealing Surgical Extraction. Disappointing. I don't play a Shadow Spear. That's not a thing that the deck can do. Construct in. Construct in. I'm going to tutor for Mox Opal here. Just need my mana online. And I'm going to play the other Saga before they surgical the one that's in my graveyard already. Not that I think that's even a good play, but it did technically exist. Backing. And I'm going to plow in their upkeep unless they lightning bolt something, which would turn off my opal, then I have to do it now. Lightning bolt targeting me on my face. That's rude. That seems like they're gearing up for a Merc Tide, just throwing cards in the graveyard like that. Okay, the Delver's gone. I'll take that. It's definitely a meltdown. Yep, there it is. And they can fetch and play Merc Tide right now. Absolute carnage. Oh, they didn't play it. Good, 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 good. All right, I'm going to play Soul Guide Lantern. I'm going to take the Meltdown out of their graveyard. And then I'm probably just going to take all the other cards out of their graveyard. If they play Murktide right now. They would have played it last, last turn. What am I worried about? Okay. They can play a 4-4 Murktide with exactly the resources they have available right now. Wasteland's really good. Chart of Course discarded a land. Cannot play Murktide Regent with what they have available right now. I'm at 8. Life total dwindling. Oh, hello. So I can play Seat of the Synod here. I think I would rather invest Emery first. Let them do something about that. Okay, Pyroblast is what they did about that. And then back for 3. And I think it's time to wipe out their graveyard. Just don't want to get murked here. Ponder. Did not shuffle. Another wasteland. Bummer. Taking out Tundra would be brutal. Yep. Okay, they're still sitting on this surgical extraction. Get to draw for Bobble. I draw a card that they know about. Bolting my homie first. Alright. Okay. A Force of Will that they know about is in my hand now, and I do have a blue card that they don't know about. I could fight off a Murktide here. Cracking land number four, distressing. Picking up Ponder, that's fine. A slow investment in the future. Thought Monitor. That's a happier thing for me to pitch to Force, because then I can hold on to Foundry. Not going to fight over the Ponder. And I'm in a bad spot. My life total's low. Ancient Tomb is one of my only two mana sources. My other source dies to Meltdown, Abrade, Wasteland, etc. It's a bad scene, but my opponent's kind of floundering too. If they know about Force, if they've lined up a Pyroblast as their last mystery card, then they got me. That is not what just happened. I'll take it. Ooh, Razor Tide Bridge. Okay. We are approaching a world where Thopter Foundry can go on the stack. Okay, fetching lane number five now. Hate this. Ponder. Still sitting on that surgical. They haven't brainstormed for the whole game. Delver. Okay. I know their hand right now. Oh, hello. Unless I've truly lost track somehow. I think Urza is the slam gives me a big creature they did just ponder like if delver flips revealing lightning bolt they did it but they played a lot of bolts already this game how about just don't chart a course okay don't like that either that's more looks at lightning bolt i'm going to two here but i can play thopter foundry next turn which represents both blockers and life gain if i don't get bolted out right now 
starter course just happened. Wasteland, come on. Oh, indestructible. Nice try. Got him. Okay, deck, help me out here. Oh, that was a big help. Okay, so real talk. I could go infinite right now if I do this correctly. Okay, I'm going to start with blue white. And I mean, Thought Profoundry has to resolve before anything else happens here. If they have Pyroblast, I'm wrecked. Maybe just give me this one. Just let me have it. Just a little bit. Stop tapping mana, no! Days. Okay. Um, I'll tap my Construct for mana. And I will pay one for days. And then Thopter Foundry comes into play. I think I can do this. Tap Thopter Foundry for mana. Pay one. Sacrifice Seed of the Synod. I go to 3, which lets me tap my Ancient Tomb. And then I go to 1, play Sword of the Meek. And I can float a blue and float a blue. And I can outmuscle the Surgical here. I'm going to sacrifice the Sword of the Meek. They're going to Surgical it. Then I'm going to sacrifice Razor Tide Bridge in response. And then I have infinite life, infinite mana. GG. Oh my god, what? Sacrifice Razor Tide Bridge in response. And we are out of here. Nice. Yeah, that Wasteland, uh, they're talking about it in the chat. They didn't know that this cycle of lands was indestructible. And I did go off for Exaxes using all of my mana and all of my life total. And that Wasteland would have made that not possible. Let's go. All right. New life. Another chance at existence here. We've seen the meltdowns, we've seen the pyroblasts. Don't really have a plan for meltdown. Like there's a this welding jar in the sideboard. What is that for if not what meltdown matchups? If I bring in this welding jar, I I would be cutting what? As something from the top end, maybe one of the forces. Like force is an important tool in this matchup, but Staff of the Storyteller and Thopter Foundry can fight Merktides pretty well. I'm also a Swords of Plowshares deck. It's really Meltdown that I need to worry about, which I just cut a card that might be good against Meltdown for a card that is medium fine against Meltdown. Just gonna have to live with that. This is what I got. Uh, Saga Soul Guide. Not exactly a great start. No white man in this hand. Highly susceptible to Wasteland. I can transmute Sword of the Meek for Thopter Foundry. That line exists, which I have not seen yet. Not accelerating the saga hurts, though. There is a world where I tutor Opal and then just transmute and go off. It's Delver. That seems like I'm asking a lot, though. I'm going to mulligan this. Okay, here we go. I'm going to keep this and two foundries. I think I bought him the transmute. I like having two foundries and the removal spell. Let's do this. And depending on what they do, turn one will, de de will determine if I Razor Tide Bridge or Urza Saga. If they just land go, I'm going to play Saga. Okay, yeah, if they played a threat, I would have tried to get my white mana under me. But let's do the Saga thing. Wasteland, okay. Uh, you got a threat all along. So they must have just drawn that Delver this turn, or else why wouldn't it be in play already? Unless they were holding a Pyroblast to fight specifically Emery. Right, Razor Tide Bridge. Maybe they'll wasteland it again. Delver didn't flip. Sweet Reprieve. Force of Will. Ottawara is a powerful tool for later. And I don't lose life if they daze me. I think I'm going to play the Ancient Tomb though. The Ottawara bouncing on Murktide is just a game shifting momentum play. That might I might need at some point here. They are fetching in response. I can pay for a spell pierce or fluster storm. I could pay for double days. They could have hard casted days there just to deal two damage to me of my ancient tomb. Glad they didn't. Oh ball. Okay. Um now I'm gonna start playing my lands out. The white Thopter Foundry. This is just sort of chilling right now. 
I could sacrifice. Okay, uh, I'm going to let them counter that one. And I might have to force a surgical if they have it, but maybe let's just hope they don't. Over flipped revealing ponder. Here's a ponder. Scalding tar, and that can rebuy pyroblast now. We've seen Mystic Sanctuary in their deck. Welding jar, neat. That's a zero that both turns on Opal and increases my affinity. I could play the slot monitor right now. I think that's better than Boundary. I could have played both if I'm willing to just ignore days. No Pyroblast, please. Force of Will pitching days. Okay. Uh, I think this is worth the fight. Losing a Thopter Foundry hurts, but having a creature that draws two and trades with Delver, and it's going to be hard to kill because of Welding Jar, that's a good deal here. I jar that immediately. Plus two cards. Play my land, play my bobble, and bobble them. Do I need to bobble them? Uh, Swords of Plowshares is in my deck. Yeah, I'll bobble you. I suspect they're going to pick up some answer to this Thought Monitor, whether it's the Pyroblast or the Bolt with Mystic Sanctuary. Did not do that. Okay. They drew Brainstorm. And they cast Brainstorm. Yeah, if they dedicate any resources to this Thought Monitor and I can slide Urza through as a result, I like that deal. Life total is diminishing. Bobble. I have to take two here. I should tap Opal. Urza, please don't have found exactly Pyroblast right now. Come on! Disappointed. Okay. Bobble. There's a lightning bolt on top, and they know it's there, too, because they just brainstormed it. That was a good friggin' brainstorm. Come on. All right, can I draw Swords to Plowshares? Swords to Plowshares. Tundra, not it. Okay, this looks pretty bad, team. And they can still rebuy with Mystic Sanctuary, a Pyroblast, or a lightning bolt. I need to stabilize against the Stelver right now. Yeah, I'm just dead to bolt out of the graveyard. Yeah, just to take stock here, instead of... Using Mystic Sanctuary to guarantee Lightning Bolt or Pyroblast, they randomly drew Brainstorm, which randomly drew both Lightning Bolt and Pyroblast. Good shit. Alright, please Tunnel Vision. Nope. Alright, Lightning Bolt kills me. GG. That's just Delver stuff. All their spells are good. What are you gonna do? On to the next one. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting TCG events. It features easy-to-create event registration for 1v1 and 4-player Swiss structured tournaments. Event management has never been so simple, and it's web-based, so there's no download required. Get access for just $5 at eminence.events. subscribe I'm on the draw for round 4 with a pretty tempting hand, honestly. I play 18 lands in here, plus various baubles. I think the strength of Swords of Plowshares and Force Blue card is having me hold on to this hand, but this is one of those... Best hand I'd mulligan, worst hand I'd keep moments. Bobbling me. Did you see a land? You'd tell me if you did, right? And ponder. Okay, we get to play against Delver again. Sweet. I love playing against Delver. Chose to shuffle. How about bridge? Bridge is actually one of my best draws here. Yo! Alright, opponent. Thanks for telling me that was there. Wasteland proof piece of mana that comes into play and gets me going on Saf the Storyteller, which gets me going on Mox Opal. Oh, Raw Dogging Chart, of course, on turn two. That's not pretty. Ancient Tomb would be a great draw. All right, I'll take a Tundra, though. And I am prepared to fight over... Or am I? I could just wait a turn and play around days. Okay. If I hadn't drawn the land, I think I would have been prepared to Force of Will. But as it stands, I will take my opportunity to play around days. If they wasteland me, we're just back where we started and play this turn again. Brainstorm. That's not a wasteland. Okay, I feel good about my decision. If they shove a Merktide here, I can Swords to Plowshares it. Protect the plow with force if necessary, and then untap and go staff of the storyteller. Mox Opal immediately draw a card. I don't like this. 
situation we're in. And they have five cards in their hand, so good chance they can fight over this at least a little bit. But maybe they won't. Cool, it's just gone. Simply deleted. Ancient Tomb is cool for the future. I'm not doing that right now. Staff of the Storyteller. Played, got through the days. And then Mox Opal is on at this point. I'm going to draw a card. And I didn't draw Emery. I have one, two, three artifacts. That's not enough to do anything with this Thought Monitor. All right, cool. Urza Saga set up. Staff of the Storyteller in play on an empty board. I am approaching Thought Monitor status. This is what a good setup versus Delver looks like compared to the last three games we played. Did not shuffle. DRC. Wasteland gets to take out a Tundra. Turn later than that really mattered. And now I get to play Saga. Lots of Sagas. Alright, don't have another Wasteland, please. I could play this Thought Monitor into Days. I could also use my Mox Opal as Lotus Petal and not get dazed. Kind of like that. Opal, re-opal. Thought monitor on the stack. Daze proof. Another plow and sword is now here. And I have enough stats in the air to trade with DRC even if it gets delirious. I'm going to save this plow for a Merktide or something that I'm not already beating in combat. Elberino. Got that one beat. That one's even smaller than DRC. Wasteland. Disappointing. But I have another saga. I'm ready. Ready to live this life. Also, I could just play and equip Sword of the Meek onto Thought Monitor, and it's the biggest creature on Earth. Merktide. That's fine. Okay. Still gonna respect days. I've come this far. Oh, Transmute. Wow. That's a bangerino. I'm at 20. I could Ancient Tomb. Maybe let's see what happens with the Swords to Plowshares first, and then I'll make a decision on Ancient Tomb versus Urza Saga. Plow the Merktide. Okay. And... Yeah, now I'm going to play Sword of the Meek and equip it to Thought Monitor. Let's have a 3-4 creature. Nobody can beat that. And then next turn, I can transmute Sword into Thopter. And... I think we're about done here. Let's see what happens. Brainstorm flips the Delver. There's the Brainstorm. Milling a Daze. No surprise there. You can go with the one in their hand. Amazing what a difference having Swords to Plowshares in a deck is. As they've played two Merktide Regents already this game, and I, the only damage I've taken is from my own Ancient Tomb. That's the difference between like, oh no, what do I do about this? And yeah, kill that, whatever. Okay, uh, true name, I can outmuscle that with only one card in their hand. It can't be Force Blue card, and Daze doesn't beat me here, so getting after it. I will just outmuscle true name Nemesis, and they're drawing Brainstorm because they mystic it up. Versus Saga, get in. Versus Bobble, get in. Game and bobble them and figure out what this card is definitively. It's a lightning bolt. I don't care about that. And blue blue. Gonna have to read exactly how this card works. Sacrifice an artifact. If you do, search a library for an artifact card. If that card's mana value is less than or equal to the sacrifice artifact's mana value, put it onto the battlefield. If it's greater, pay X. Okay, so I put this on the stack. And then I lose the sword. And I get Thopter Foundry, and then the game ends. I'm going to sack Thought Monitor because I don't need this anymore. Get the party going. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What am I doing? Don't tap the white source, idiot. You have staff the storyteller in play. I sack Thought Monitor. I'm prioritizing my mana sources and staff of the storyteller over another 2 2 body when I'm already going to have zillions of bodies and we're doing it we're doing the thing all right shields up life gain engine online blockers available card draw engine also online just have to not die to a true name nemesis but i'll be gaining something like six life a turn 
And my bobble drew force, so it's even all backed up by force blue card, if that matters. There's the brainstorm we knew about. That's not my fight. Billing another daze, which was put there from the brainstorm they cast last turn. So I was right to play around daze this whole game. We're going to collect their three points from true name, but that's the only thing that's going to attack the rest of this game on their side. And I'm going to draw a card from staff. I think that's better than another token, because if I find more lands, then that just represents more tokens. And this is how I do that. Saga ticks up. Bobble. Take a look at the top of that deck. Minor misstep. Sure. Don't care. And Thopter, attack. I could attack with all of these. There are 28. Jeez, that's so much. All right, here we go. Here they come. Can eat one for free with a Delver. Or not. That works too. And then I'm just going to pass the turn with all my mana available. Very Mastermind. Yucko. Um, it's fine though. Okay. Just another 2-1. And they're drawing Minor Mist up. Which I don't care about. And they still have this Lightning Bolt that I know about. A Bobble draws me one card this turn. Anything other than True Names attacks, they just eat their whole squad. Interesting. Okay. Stack the sword. Bring this back. And they can Lightning Bolt the biggest one, I guess, to save the Delver. But their squad's still getting obliterated here. And I think Plague Winding them is better than making a Construct token here. So I'm just going to sink all my mana into blockers and destroy their, their team. Okay, I now have six blockers totaling a lot of power and toughness to mess up the squad. Put two here, or I have to put three here and then put two here. And that covers everything. All contingencies are addressed. They probably don't even cast the bolt since it doesn't do anything. They just line up blocks that kill the most things. Or not. Never mind. Yeah, that doesn't change combat. And now they don't have a bolt. Okay. Goodbye, all your creatures. I'm at 17. Saga can pop this turn. I think I will make a construct on the way out. Just make that true name stay home for the rest of the game. This thing's so big. And tutor Soul Guide Lantern, I think. Take the land out of their graveyard. That is a unique card type at the moment, somehow. Back with all creatures. Does drawing a card matter? One, two, three. I don't have four mana to play Urza. So, no. I'm just in on Thopter Foundry. Brainstorm off the top's pretty good. They milled another daze. We've seen three dazes this game, all of them put in the graveyard directly by Dragon's Rage Channeler. And that's why DRC is so secretly bonkers. Not that it's a secret, but a uh, person who doesn't play a lot of Legacy or is new to Magic maybe assessing this card might not realize the virtual card advantage you get by not having to draw days in situations like this one. Merktide. I don't even care. Just genuinely don't care. I can block it forever and I can attack around it. Attacking with true name is bold because I have a 12-12 that's going to be a, what, 16-18 by the time we get around to my turn. We will begin the grim work of tapping all my lands and making all my creatures. Alrighty, here they are. My 16-16 is now a 17-17. It can be even bigger if I want it to. Okay, attack with all my creatures. Every single one. To kill the DRC, and Merktide's going to block the 2-3, and my opponent takes 8. And I still think that Opters... Or no, I could draw Urza, so I will draw a card here. Prismatic Ending, not helpful, but didn't hurt anybody. Yeah, Urza there is just infinite life. In paper, if I drew Urza there, I could make infinite life, infinite creatures, infinite mana, and just flip cards off the top of my deck until I can plow both the DRC and the Merktide, and then Construct is an infinite infinite that can connect. I would not bother to execute that on Magic Online because it would take forever, but there was a deterministic onboard win with Urza if I had one. Okay, last round I did Welding Jar and Lion Sash with Pithing Needle in the maybe pile. 
I think I want to go down two opals. I only went down one last game, but I think I want to do more. It's just such a shitter for Meltdown. And last time I cut a force. I could cut force and get hitting Needle in. But Needle also dies to Meltdown, and then if they've just loaded two Wastelands in play because of Pithing Needle, then they melt down and waste all my mana all in one turn. That sounds bad. But also Force of Will is a two for one against the Pyroblast deck. I will bring in the Needle. Let's do it. Just trying stuff here. I don't know what the completely correct answer is, if there even is one. One lander that does not contain a Needle, I am going to keep, though. I have two draw steps plus Bobble to find another mana source. I have turned to Emery, if, even if I miss the land drop. Opponent mold to six. And Channeler. And Bobble. Build another land. So they're not looking for mana. They have that. They're looking for spells. It did not bobble on my turn. Interesting. Or it didn't bobble on their turn. They're waiting for my turn to do it. I'm going to bobble before my land drop. If they want to get super rowdy and daze that, go ahead. Building Tarn on top of your deck. Tundra, Prismatic Ending. This is a good target for daze, unfortunately. But I'm not in a position to play around that card at all right now. Bobble. They bobbled me. They know what I'm about to draw. I'm hoping to fade a wasteland out of them. Did not draw a land. Ponder. They're still on the hunt. Goes to shuffle. Ah, they had it. Okay, let's draw a land. Always had it. Was never worried. Soul Guide Lantern. Get in there. Knock out the Ponder. Ponder is a unique card type right now, and it's the one that makes Mark type bigger. Brainstorm. There's the Scalding Tarn. I'm going to see a shuffle here. All right, deck, let's keep the hits coming. Blue source to get Emery on. Uh-oh. Um, this is going to be a giant sign of weakness if I pop my Soul Guide Lantern. I don't know if I can afford not to make that display of weakness, because I do need a land. All right, I'm going to Soul Guide to draw a card and maybe die. On land. Bithing Needle naming Wasteland. Not the land I was looking for. It's some small amount of comfort, though. But I do have concerns now. Missing colored sources, missing mana in general. Elver didn't flip. I hope he drew Wasteland. All right, deck Tundra off the top. Tundra. Magic card Tundra. That's not it. Tapping Ancient Tomb into an active Delver hurts both physically and emotionally, but my deck does care about having artifacts in play, so I'm going to keep casting them. Very Mastermind. Bummer. That card's really good. Delver continues not to flip. Smash to dust. Oh no. Oh no. Alright. I can concede this game. We're good. We're good. You did it. Settle down. Smash to dust. Destroy target artifact. Deals one to all creatures. Okay. That could clear out a Thopter army or smash the a hate piece of some kind. Both of which are powerful things. Yeah, I think I still want the needle. Same deck. Back in. A zero land hand. I'll mulligan that one. A two land hand. I will keep this one. And put Urza on the bottom. And I will live in fear of Wasteland. As I do. Oh, I went to four. That's the relief I needed here. I'm going to lead on Ottawara. I'm not going to dance around anything. If they just try to cheese wasteland me on this mold of four, I need to protect my white source. Ponder. Okay. Did not shuffle. Okay, I'm going to bobble them. See if I can... I mean, I get a... One and four shot of seeing a daze here, if they have one. Flooded Strand. All right, I'm going to go for Staff. They're on a mold of four. They're weak right now. I'm just going to cast my best card. All right, if they have days, they have days. But Thopter Foundry is waiting in the wings here. There's a saga, what's up? And we've seen Flooded Strand in their hand. There's a saga. Remove the Delver. Just get it out. I'm not even interested in doing anything clever here. Ponder. 
Just give me one turn without a wasteland. You can waste this saga next turn. So let me have a construct in the meantime. Okay, cool. Flooded strands of the play. They shuffled the ponder, didn't find what they were looking for. Oh god, I can cast Urza right now. That's tempting. Cast Urza with force backup on this board. I think I want to let my saga run its course. Rather than get rowdy with this with the Urza. My opponent's on the Moldafor in this matchup where they have tons of tools to pick me apart. I don't want to get greedy on a bigger thing and lose the, the guaranteed action right now. Start a course, go for it. They still have not found a wasteland. Delver of Secrets, okay. Two cards left in their hand. My saga will be able to run its full course here. Transmute Artifact, holy moly. Oh, there's so many tempting options here. I am going to make a construct, though. I'm going to stick to the thing I said last turn, which is just tutor, tutor, tutor. Get my value where my value is accessible. Welding Jar is somewhat tempting here. That would protect Thopter Foundry from Meltdown. Oh, wait, I have the wrong half here. The Transmute doesn't get me straight into the combo. Not worried about needling Wasteland anymore. Merktide region is under control if I Thopter Foundry effectively. I'm worried about getting melted down. That's the problem. I'm going to get Mox Oval. Because this lets me put Thopter Foundry into play. And Transmute is going to be my pitch card to force if I need to force something. But right now I'm just ready to bash. Silver did not flip, which means it didn't reveal Meltdown, which was the nightmare scenario I was worried about. If they were holding Meltdown, they didn't reveal Pyroblast to protect it, or Force of Will to protect it. Don't care about Merktide Regent. This is a card I can beat. And Force of Will is the glue that holds this party together. Razor Tide Bridge. One, two, three, four. Urza. I could transmute now. That gives up on Force of Will. If I wait a turn, I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They didn't challenge the Urza. All right, uh, this is pretty close to free to do. I'm going to go for it and rotate away one of the constructs, I guess. Okay, Transmute Artifact is on the stack. Moment of truth. Okay, sacking a construct. And then I'm getting sort of the meek. And I don't actually even have to pay the two. It ends up in the graveyard, right? If you don't put it onto the battlefield. Or if you don't put it into the other graveyard, then shuffle. Uh, I am not going to pay the two. No, it's the same thing. I will pay the two. One, two. Okay. I think this works either way. But now I have infinite life and infinite blockers. And I'm not losing to Surgical. Got to remember how to click this. On Magic Online, you hold W. That uh, shortcuts mana abilities. And you set auto yields. And this is a pretty tight little click loop. If you're doing it right. And I will just make Thopters until my opponent is satisfied that I've won the game. And this is one of those spots that I was talking about where Paper Magic's a little different than Magic Online. In Paper Magic, I would simply declare, make infinite mana, flip until I hit two swords, attack you for infinite. But instead, I will have to attack with a construct this turn, leave enough blockers back. And if this was like a Pro Tour qualifier or something, I would take the time to click it out. I'm up a game. I've got plenty of time to do this. But in a league, I will just use the clock effectively here. They're dead next turn anyway. I can hard cast force. I can make infinite life and infinite creatures in response to anything they might try to do. But yeah, that was the win already in Paper Magic. And they're good for it. All right. We have, what, one left? And we're three and one. Positive record lock. Got that bread and butter 4-1 coming. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSHENROLL for 10% off when you check out.
I'm on the play for the final round. 4-1 record hangs in the balance. My opponent says, hi, YouTube. Everyone say hi to XX new kid XX. Anyway, I'm mulling this in. If I knew they were oops all spells, double force, double blue card, pretty good, but it's not actually doing anything. This one kind of rules. I'm in for it. I can play an indestructible land, then saga, and then another land, and interact meaningfully with creatures. I'm going to set sort of the meek away. That's a card I don't need right away. I've been pleased with Transmute Artifact in this league, though. Just thought popped in my head from the end of last game. Two feels like the right number, and it feels really good in this shell. Flooded Strand. Where's the saga? Get after it. Wasteland. Peace. Tough crowd today. Lots of wastelands. Luckily, I have Razor Tide Bridges. Okay, if I play Seed of the Synod and Urza's Bobble, Podcast would cost two. Is that better than investing? No, it can cost one next turn. I'll just chill. Until they show me what they're actually up to. I'm not trying to shove spells into days. Okay. Delver confirmed. Oh. Rug Delver, maybe? Or something completely different? Okay, Rug Delver it is. That is certainly a deck that there is in the format. Seat of the Synod. Versus Bobble. Thought Cast for one mana. Jablamo. Words to Plowshares, you are idiot. And Mishra's Bobble. Do I want redraws? Uh, yeah, I guess I do. And I'm just going to fire both off now. Brainstorm and Lightning Bolt. Okay. Noted. Staff of the Storyteller. Awesome card. Thoughtcast, awesome card. All right, we're drawing the cool half of the deck now. There's a Brainstorm. Luda Delta is not Wasteland. Ponder. All right, they're digging. Trying to set up a Merc Tide, probably. I mean, this deck could have Minskin Boo in it. Usually it's in the sideboard, but there's different sizes of Teamer or Rug, however you'd like to think about it. There's just starting mid-range one where Tarmogoyf is their efficient creature, and then there's the higher-up one where Tarmogoyf, or uh, the lower-to-the-ground one with Delver and stuff, where Tarmogoyf is the top end and then Minskin Boo's in the sideboard. I'm just going insane right now. Ripping off thought casts like crazy. Playing around days. Filling my hand up while the getting's good. Spell pierce. Okay. The getting was not as good as I thought it was. Disappointing. Yeah. If I knew that spell pierce was a card they had, I could have just activated staff and done everything that turn. But I did not know that. Wasteland. I barely care about that. Armagoyf. That one is medium solid. But I have a removal spell for it. Thought Monitor. This currently costs three. If I play Tundra and Prismatic Ending. Let's start there. White blue. I'm going to draw a card with Staff rather than cast Thopter Foundry into Soft Permission. And I get to attack for one. And I have Ottawara for a potential Merc Tide. Force of Will available for Minskin Boo if it shows up now. So they wastelanded me so fast last turn, and that was mana number four, that they either are not playing Minskin Boo or don't have one in their hand right now. So we're doing something with three mana, or this might just be a shuffle after the Brainstorm. Another Brainstorm, sure. We have no idea if they held on to this Lightning Bolt. They've Brainstormed three times since we saw it, but I'm keeping it up anyway. Just keeping on the radar. Murktide, don't care. Not caring about Murktide region is such a good feeling. Podcast. This one is a one drop right now. Yeah, I'll start with that. Mox Opal and Transmute Artifact. Hello, hello. Mox Opal. Now. Thought Monitor only costs two now. Let me see what happens with this Thopter Foundry. And then we can make additional decisions. They're currently tapped out. They could force of will. I still have Ottawa available as a land drop if I want that. So I could force pitching Thought Not or Thought Monitor and then transmute artifact playing around days. That actually seems nutso. Force you back pitching Thought Monitor. And give up on Ottawa because I don't need it anymore if this is the game we're playing. 
and then blue, blue, transmute artifact. And this can end up in the graveyard. I don't even care. Do I want to keep staff to draw cards or do I just want to outmuscle all of this? I could sack a land here. But then I'd have to sack another land to get the Thopter train going. Yeah, I'll just sack the staff. Get Sword of the Meek. I think just having zillions of mana here is the way to go. Okay, shields are up. Opponent will need something pretty spicy in their main deck to beat me now. Wasteland doesn't matter. Testing my Tundra, sure, don't care. That is slightly fewer Thopters I can make. Also, who cares? I'll block with my Spirit. No reason to take 8 and get myself into burn range, or if they do play a random sweeper or something, I don't know. That will replace itself very quickly. Oh, this calls 1 right now. Nuts. Ancient Tomb. Mistress Bobble. Bobble ya. Lightning Bolt on top. No way to know if that's the same one we saw before, or if Bolt's still in their hand or what. But I am uh, not worried about it. I'm going to sack Sword now, though. Just make sure that I have at least one blocker up. Another opal. Okay, that means I can sack the first opal for a Thopter. Though that doesn't even matter. That's the same as sacrificing Sword in the Meek for a Thopter. And then playing another opal. You end up in the same spot. And this is the spot that I was talking about in the deck tech that we discovered from the Demir artifact deck that inspired this one. Most normal decks just can't beat Thopter Sword. And trying to do anything else with your deck is just unnecessary. Okay, uh, Delver for the third match in a row. I have something that resembles a plan that's emerged here. I've been doing two Opals and a Force out for Hithing Needle, Welding Jar, Lion Sash. This list is likely to contain Minsk and Boo. Which Needle can point at, but that might mean I'm more interested in Force of Will. They could also play Life from the Loam, and recurring Wastelands are a huge problem for me. I think I'm going to lean towards Force of Will because you really don't want to play against Minsk and Boo. Alright. Accelerated Saga. I will be overloading any Wastelands they have. If they go Delver of Secrets and then back it up with stuff, I could be in trouble, but if they start with Ponder, which is what ended up happening, this hand is pretty great. Did not shuffle. Oh, I could also turn one Emery here. Do I think that's better than getting Urza Saga going? Sagas get dazed, but... Alright, let's go for Emery. This is the type of engine that's super messed up. But we got a Force of Will out of that. That's nice. Force Pitching Brainstorm. Count it. There's a channeler on top of their deck. The land that's in play is currently green. So if they wasteland me, then they're not playing Dragon's Rage Channeler. It is not a wasteland, but it is likely a red source. Okay, we have seen Spell Pierce out of this deck. Does Mox Opal get ahead of Spell Pierce? If I go Ancient Tomb, Urza's Bobble, Mox Opal. That's four mana. Yeah, okay. I can live in this world. For Head of Spell Pierce, we know they don't have Daze because they Force of Will to Dazeable card last turn. Meltdown's a bummer, but Meltdown's always going to be a bummer. Not much to be done about that. I am going to bobble them now. So you have Ponder in the hand. Okay. Another Tomb. Alright. They've not indicated they have access to Wasteland, but I am insulated against it. So much so that I would like to start drawing spells deck, please. They did not bin their Surveil card. They like what they found. Bobble. This gets them Delirium. They still didn't Surveil a card even after the Ponder. But they like every card they saw there. Uh, blocking actually seems fine. I mean, Murktide Regent is a card that exists. But for now, just gaining 3 life doesn't seem that bad. Ooh. This one costs four right now. I play Urza's Saga and one, two, three, four. Use that three life I gained last turn by blocking. Get this thing on the stack. 
Pyroblast is fine. It's going to happen eventually. And I can draw a card. Let's staff the Storyteller. Another one of those. Cool. All right, let's see. Have you been floating a Meltdown? Am I about to get my Merc tided? Found a Wasteland. That's going to go for Saga. That would be my guess anyway. I guess there could be some hero play of going after Seed of the Synod instead. Seems not right, though. And they agree with my assessment. I'll just keep drawing sagas, though. It's cool. Another saga. And I will keep hurting myself. Play Thought Monitors. That one was worth a force of will pitching spell, Pierce. Okay. And my life total is under pressure, but they're running out of clean answers to stuff. Going to 10 here. Please don't add another threat. At least not a flying one. Oh, no. All right, that's bad. Soul Guide Lantern off the top. These are Tide Bridge. Don't think that's what I'm after. I'm going to play Saga. And I am going to main phase the token so I can draw a card. Because if I find Soul Guide Lantern, that's really good. All right, no love there. I'm going to four off this attack. But I can tutor the Soul Guide if I survive this turn cycle. All right, have we been sitting on double bolt? What's going on? Draw for turn, another staff. Wow, that's good. I think that's good later, though. And I'm going to pound out constructs right now. Gets me another token. Gets me another draw. Night Tutor, Soul Guide Lantern. Which takes out Mishra's Bauble. And that will knock them off Delirium without taking the whole graveyard. And can't really go into bolt range so i think i'm gonna go tundra and another staff of the storyteller that just creates another blocker if it resolves and do i attack here if they bolt my spirit get delirium i can knock delirium off okay i still end up at three they would need double bolt okay yeah, I'm taking the hit here. Taking the swing. Okay, moment of truth. I don't care about Murktide because I have Ottawara, so I'm not going to proactively pop the Soul Guide. And if that happened, I would be really worried about like Soul Guiding them in their upkeep, and then they're like, ponder, surveil, spare, bolt your spirit, surveil, surveil, in for six. Kind of welcome a Murktide Regent. It's smaller than my creatures. Uh-oh. They did have one bolt. Surveil to Wasteland. Okay. You are not delirious. Their hand would have to be land second lightning bolt, which it's not. Cool. And they didn't sacrifice the DRC to put me to three. I don't... Can I make another construct here? Is that what this game is about? What's in my deck? What am I tutoring for here? Welding jar? Soul Guide Lantern's already in play. I don't need another redraw. Deciding if I want a construct here, I can't really tap Ancient Tomb in good faith. Ottawara could be a game changer. Emery can block these things. Okay, I am just going to float and tutor. And I think I want... I mean, Urza's Bauble would give me the information I'm looking for. I'll take Urza's Bauble for now. And if I play Razor Tide Bridge... That makes both of these into nines. Not quite lethal. That sucks. I could draw a card, see what happens. That sounds reasonable, actually. I'm going to draw a card here. Thoughtcast, I'm going to draw more cards here. Transmute Artifact. Does that win me the game? Not quite. So now I think Ottawa needs to be a mana source. And not play Razor Tide Bridge. If I attack with both constructs, they have to block at least one of them. And that's true even if I bobble first. So I am going to bobble first. See what their last card is. It's important information to have. Minsk and Boo. Okay, I don't care about that. They're not going to be able to cast that by drawing one card off the top of their deck. And I Ottawa with what I have, not without going to two, but does that matter? If I Ottawa a Delver and attack with my constructs, they have to block one of them, then they go down to one Dragon's Rage Channeler. 
and I can make sure that I can't deal three, but then I'm dead if they top deck Bolt. I don't know if I can beat Bolt anyway. I do have one random mana floating right now. I could Ottawara transmute Staff of the Storyteller into... Oh, I think that's the line. Okay, so Ottawara play it right now while I have a mana floating. Blue, blue. Transmute artifact. Sacrifice Staff of the Storyteller, which gets Thopter Foundry. And with this random floating mana, I can gain one life and make one extra blocker. Sacking Seed of the Synod to do that. And that doesn't change the size of anything. It just gives me more blocking. More blocking and more life. I have to block one of these. The okay, opponent's at three. Oh, they blocked with Delver. Fascinating. Okay. I draw for my bauble. That was a really long turn of thinking. Okay, so I'm going to let them attack. I'm going to block with a Thopter. And then I'm going to Slow Guide Lantern their business away. I end up at four, which is out of bolt range. They have one unknown card in their hand. If it's Meltdown, my Thopter Foundry survives that, and I'm still stable. Okay, we really did the math on that one. Four and one record. That's a respectable showing. Going through the Delver Meat Grinder. Beat it twice, lost to it once. I think I'm actually higher on Razor Tide Bridge after playing the, the matches. When we were building the deck, I was worried about ETB tapped, slowing down the explosive nature of the Urza part of the deck. And while that is true, Ancient Tomb frequently did not cast our spells, but it also frequently got us ahead on important turns. So I'm going to go three and three, just move one more Razor Tide Bridge, one less Ancient Tomb. And I think that's already a big step in the right direction. I think these Disenchants should be, or at least one of them should be another Prismatic Ending, and then minus one Disenchant. Because with Mox Opal, you can go up to three with Ending, which is usually the magic number. But you need two for Collector Oof and Null Rod, which are the card we're really worried about. I think this sideboard could be cleaned up. Damping Sphere could be something else. You could play Deafening Silence in that spot. It's probably just a better card that doesn't mess up your own Ancient Tombs. Reality Chip was a fun one. It never really came up, but it's very cool if it happens, but it's hard to make happen. I do like Lion Sash. The Welding Jar was pretty solid against Meltdown. Yeah, there's a few flex slots in the sideboard, but I was happy with the performance of this deck. Holophobia, we definitely upgraded the situation from the previous run we did with this. Transmute Artifact, a huge innovation. Really dialing in on Thopter Foundry, also a huge innovation. I'm a big fan. I have nothing else to say. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the Patreon and the sponsors that support the video. Check out mintmobile.com slash Bosch and Roll to save a bunch of money on your wireless service. And thanks for, all, for watching. I'll see you next time.